Our universe wasn't always here. Billions of years ago, there was nothing. No light, no sounds, no matter. Just an endless void, untouched by time or space. And then... Just imagine, a huge explosion so big that everything that exists comes out of it, and then... Honey? I, yes? If you want him to love space as much as you do, maybe give the Big Bang a little more context and a little less, you know, boom. I'm abridging the story. You know how short a kid's attention span is? You can find a balance. Come on, try again. <clears throat> many, many years ago. The universe as we know, it didn't exist. It's hard to picture, right? No matter, no space, no time. So how can there be a before? Before the beginning of time? The answer? I don't know. Now you might wonder, Daddy, how can all of this come out of nothing? Well, imagine nothing as a tiny, super dense point. So small, yet containing everything. A singularity. Hello. This ancient singularity, fluctuating and unstable, finally burst into a massive expansion of energy. Oh. The Big Bang. This wasn't just some cool action movie explosion. Everything we know had its start there. In the first microseconds, the four fundamental forces of the universe emerged from being initially combined into one. Maybe you could simplify that part a little bit? Fine, I'll make them into characters. I'm gravity. Think of me as the force of attraction between objects with mass. Hi, I'm electromagnetism. My force can attract or repel things depending on their charge. Yo, I'm the strong nuclear force. I'm like the glue that holds the nucleus of an atom together. And yeah, I'm the strongest of all the forces. Take that, suckers. Uh, greetings, I'm the weak nuclear force. Uh, I help break atoms apart so they can change into different elements. Uh, it might sound simple, but without forces like mine, the sun wouldn't have the power to shine. Okay, that was pretty clear. If your astronaut gig doesn't pan out, you could always be a teacher. And spend my days telling stories about inanimate objects with over-exaggerated personalities? Who would even enjoy that? I don't know. You'd be surprised. So, during the first microseconds, a lot happened. The forces we talked about separated as temperatures dropped from this chaotic hot mess. The universe rapidly expanded in a smooth and homogeneous way and- When do we get to see the planets? In a minute, honey. Or more like in a few million years. Got it. At one point after the explosion, the universe was just this big gelatinous plasma thingy filled with all the fundamental particles. As it kept cooling down, some of those particles formed protons and neutrons. Oh, and matter and antimatter had a bit of a showdown. Luckily for us, matter won. Yay! So, after all that, a bit of matter was left over. And that leftover matter, well, that's the universe we see today. Wow. All of this happened in how many years? Guess what? Not even a single second has passed yet. Really? Cool. So, when do we get to see the planets? I told you. Okay, okay. I'll be patient. Electron. Well, nice to meet you. I'm Mr. Proton. How come we've never met? I don't know. Maybe because things have cooled down recently? <laughs> yes. Over 380,000 years of a boiling hot universe, it was getting tiresome. <laughs> Indeed. So, now that things are more chill, want to hang out? Is that allowed? Maybe. Who cares? <laughs> Let's do it. Whee! And so, the first ever atoms began to form neutral hydrogen atoms. With fewer electrons scattering light, the entire universe became this vast, transparent thing, allowing light to travel freely. This is one of the ways we know the Big Bang actually happened. Wait, you lost me there. The particles of light, called photons, could finally travel freely. These photons created what we call the cosmic microwave background. It's like a baby picture of the universe. 
Do you really carry that in your wallet, honey? Hey, I knew it would come in handy one day, and it did. Okay. So, now that there are atoms, I guess planets start to form? Not for a while, actually. Stars hadn't formed yet, so there wasn't much light. From this point on, we enter what is known as... The Dark Age. But don't worry, it didn't last long. Just a quick 150 million years. You throw these numbers around so casually. That's what happens when you're talking about space. So, what happened after 150 million years of darkness? The first stars were formed. Yay! Okay, Junior, this part of the story isn't scary anymore. It was absolute chaos! These early stars were massive and short-lived. Planets began to form, but with stars exploding left and right, the universe was in a constant state of chaos. Ah! <clears throat> it wasn't until a few billion years later, in a galaxy now known as the Milky Way, that a smaller star was born. This star is our sun. Who? Where, where am I? <laughs> hey, Toliman, look at this one. Nice find, Rigel. Can you please help me? I'm scared. Please help me, I'm scared. <laughs> oh, poor little star. Come on, don't bully him. Guys, get out of the way! <laughs> Scary! What is it, Arcturus? It's that star! It's going supernova! Okay, I'm See ya, baby star. We gotta go! Hello? Uh, are you in pain? <laughs> Run, little one. Hello? No! Don't go to sleep! Please! I don't want to be alone! I guess that's good enough for now. Good night, son. 